Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. What would it cost to fix up a room in your house? You know, make it a more attractive place to live in. Well, it could cost a lot of money. But Johnson's Paste Wax can improve a room more than you'd believe possible for less than a dollar. Imagine the floors in your living room so glossy, so clear and bright that they shine like a mirror. Imagine the beauty and warmth such polished floors would bring to everything in that room. That's exactly what happens when you use Johnson's Paste Wax. Your room is more beautiful than you thought possible. Johnson's Paste Wax protects your floors, too. Forms a hard shield over that surface that dirt can't penetrate. And that's very easy to clean. Next time you're at the store, pick up a pound of genuine Johnson's Paste Wax. There's none other quite like it. No other wax can bring such lustrous beauty to the floors of your home in exactly the same way. Johnson's Paste Wax. Well, tonight is the big formal dance of the season at the country club. And only the cream of Wistful Vista Society is invited. The cream line, however, seems to be a trifle lower this year, because look who's going to be the guests of Mayor Latrivia at the affair. Yes, Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, my, imagine us going to the country club dance, McGee, and as guests of the mayor himself, no less. Yep. Zipper my dress up the back, will you, dearie? Sure. Turn around. Ah, there you are. Hey, how's my tuxedo look? Okay? Wonderful. Only stand up straight, dearie. Hmm? You're getting your shoulders in more curves than Highway 66. <laughs> I'll straighten up when I get to the club. No use wasting my strength now. <laughs> you sure this single-breasted coat looks okay, though? Lots of the new tuxedos have double-breasted coats, and I don't want to look a like single a... single-breasted jacket is still fine. Men's form of clothes don't change much anyhow. No? The difference between one soup and fish and another soup and fish is superficial. <laughs> There, how do I look now? Ah, beautiful. Hey, look, baby. If you can sneak away from that old duck you're married to tonight, let's you and me have a couple of dances, huh? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but my husband is terribly jealous. Yeah? He'd never let me dance with a handsome stranger like you. He'd simply... I'll get it. Oh, you beautiful dog. Who is it, McGee? Delivery boy. Gee whiz, Molly, that Latrivia is a wonderful host, you know it. Look, he sent you some flowers. Oh, how nice. Yeah. A beautiful carnation. A carnation? Yeah. Oh, and look, an orchid for me. <laughs> I'll trade you. Okay. I like carnations anyhow. Hey, we ought to leave pretty soon, you know that. I told the trip we'd meet him at his house at 8 o'clock. At we'll his go... house? Aren't we driving out to the country club? No, nope. we're going to leave our car at La Trivia's and ride out to the country club with him in his private limousine. Heavenly days get us. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that 40-foot Cadillac he rides around in? With the two police sergeants in the front seat splashing mud on all the traffic cops? <laughs> <laughs> I hope we pass 14th and Oak because there's a cop directs traffic there I'd like to... Come in. Oh, it's the old-timer, McGee. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Hi there, old-timer. Hello there, kids. Hey, Johnny, what you all dressed up for? Fit to kill? <laughs> We're going out in society tonight, old-timer. The country club dance. At the country club. With Mayor Latrivia. We're his guests. Is that so? Oh, I love parties, kids. I mind one time Papa throwed a party and made over $300. Yeah, must have been a pretty big party. 220 pounds, a fellow named Monahan. Oh. Papa throwed him down our cellar steps, hit a water pipe, and busted it. Yeah. Water flooded the basement, come up over the top of the furnace, put the fire out, and froze. Yeah. Papa opened the first indoor skating rink in town and made himself a fortune. <laughs> a small fortune. Uh. <laughs> 
Well, this will be a little different tonight. This is a very high-class dance with all the... Oh, society. no, just what you mean, Johnny. I used to travel around with all the society people myself when I lived in New York. You and society? Yep, I went every place with them. The Morgans, the Vanderbilt. My gosh, you went around with that crowd? What were you, a rich kid? Nope, a cab driver, Johnny. Oh. <laughs> I drove them all. The Rockefellers, the Astors... I even drove the papa the Dion Quince one time. My, that must have made you pretty proud. Yep. <laughs> that was quite a father in my cab. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, uh, then there was another time I guess you I... cab drivers have some pretty weird experiences, eh, old-timer? Oh, you said it, Johnny. Why, well, you wouldn't believe some of the things us New York hack drivers go through, but I'll tell you a few of them. You will? Yep. Stoplights. <laughs> well, I know you kids want to get along to the party Have a nice time and happy new year Happy new year Thank you, old timer And the coach is the heart of the ball Billy Mills the orchestra And you were only fooling have been about as enjoyable as I ever spent. Yep. Oh, what a lovely party. Such wonderful music and such nice people. It ain't any hayride, that's for sure. There's so many blue bloods here tonight, they had to quit using the pink spotlight on the dance floor. It made everybody look purple. I never met so many important people in my life. Aldermen, senators, the Chinese consul, and on the other hand, there's Wallace Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimp, old man. Hello, folks. <laughs> Isn't this a lovely party, Mr. Wimple? Are you having fun? Oh, am I ever having a time. Sweetie Face and I are played in hide-and-seek. <laughs> hide-and-seek? Here, at a formal dance? Yes. She wants to dance, and I don't want to, so she keeps looking for me, and I keep hiding. <laughs> I spent 20 minutes once with arm, in an arm's reach of her, and she never even saw me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was behind Dr. Gamble. <laughs> You'd have been safe there with two heavy friends. Don't you like to dance, Mr. Wimple? Oh, yes, but not with Sweetie Face. No? She doesn't steer easily. <laughs> trying to lead my big old wife on a dance floor is like having a snow plow driver trying to write, Goosey, Goosey, Gander, Whither do you wander in two feet of slush? <laughs> oh, Sweetie Face is headed this way. Goodbye oh, now. So long, Wimple. <laughs> Shall we dance this dance, uh, sweetheart? Gee, I promised this next one to Senator Frinkle, baby. Well, I hope you both enjoy it. You'll make a cute couple out there. No, no, no. 
I promised him he could dance with you. He seemed to be quite smoked with you. Says you're the most... Oh, oh there you are, Molly. I've been looking for you. Oh, it's a lovely party, Mr. Mayor, and we're having a scrumptious time. She said it, Latrice. I ain't seen so many off-the-shoulder dresses or so many off-the-polo pony faces since I don't know when. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to see you for was to introduce an old friend of mine, the governor of the state. The Honorable Walter M. Argabright. Oh. Governor, two of my very good friends, Mr. and Mrs. Fibber McGee. How do you do? How do you do, I'm sure, Your Honorable, or Your Highness. <laughs> Hi, Walt. I heard a lot about you. Always wanted to ask you confidentially about that little black box with the 200 grand in it that the investigating committee Just found in... Just imagine us meeting the governor. <laughs> yeah, quite an occasion. Hey, Gov. <laughs> I, uh, I've been telling the governor all about you, McGee, but I don't think he believed me. I do now, Latrivia. <laughs> Mrs. McGee, I hope you appreciate the honor of being the mayor's guest tonight. Finest man I know. And <laughs> possibly the uh, next uh, governor. <clears throat> Delighted to have met you. Good evening. Come, Latrivia. Let's see if we can find my... Come to this. <laughs> They're grooming Latrive for the governor's eh? Hey? How much will you bet I don't wind up a secretary of state? How much money is there? <laughs> Can we try that again? Oh. Shall we dance, dear, or just stand here and wait for the senator? Let's dance it ourselves, Tootsie. He's a Republican anyway, so he's used to sitting him out. <laughs> Rumba, McGee. So what? I can rumba. After all, you merely shut your eyes and imagine you're a Chevy coupe hauling a half-ton trailer with a wobbly wheel. <laughs> oh. Some fun, eh? Oh, I just love to dance. Of course, some of the new rhythms are tricky, but I... Oh, say, look at Mr. Wilcox. Huh? Where? Dancing with that beautiful girl over there to the left. Is that his wife? Nah. That's old man McDonald, the president of the Third National Bank's wife. Oh, dear? Let's dance past him and see what he's saying. Well, that's kind of snoopy, kiddo, but nobody's a bigger snoop than I am. Let's go. Oh, do tell me more, Harlow. Well, I happen to know on very good authority, Genevieve, that all the floors, woodwork, and furniture in the country club are treated with Johnson's Paste Wax for beauty and protection. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, this is just a lot of drivel. Let's go. I want to hear this. You see, there's a tremendous investment in this club, Genevieve. So naturally, they want the finest kind of wood surface protection that money can buy. And that, naturally, is Johnson's Paste Wax. Uh -huh. Well, let's not talk any more business. You're such a splendid dancer. Those little extra steps you take. Oh, well, I'm sort of an expert on extra steps, too. Because Johnson's Paste Wax makes housework so much simpler <laughs> that extra steps are practically obsolete. Makes furniture and woodwork so easy to clean and keep clean. Dust won't cling to it. Fingerprints wipe right off. But... Oh, hello there, Molly. Hiya, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Uh, you folks know Mrs. McDonald. Uh, Genevieve, this is Molly and Fibber McGee. How do you do? Well, how do you do, I'm sure. Hi, Jen. <laughs> how you been? Up to your ears in paste wax? <laughs> Say, pal, I'm certainly glad I saw you doing the rumba tonight. Oh, really, Mr. Wilcox? Like the way I rumba, Junior? No, but it just reminded me that I've got to get my cocker spaniel back from the kennel tomorrow. <laughs> Boy, will he wag his tail when he sees me again. See you later, folks. Wasn't it grand of the mayor to ask us to come tonight, McGee? Such a fine man. So handsome and so dignified. So well-liked, too. Yeah, that's a great kid, Latrivia. With his personality, what I could do for him if I was his campaign manager... You were whose campaign manager, turtleneck? <laughs> oh, hi, Doc. Hello, Dr. Gamble. Isn't this a lovely party? Yes, it is indeed. I never miss these annual dances. You ought to go to a few in between, too, Fatso. <laughs> Confidentially, I've been watching you dance tonight. 
And there's nothing wrong with your style that you couldn't correct by careful observation of a drunken rhinoceros. <laughs> now, McGee, that is simply not correct. The doctor is an excellent dancer. Oh, thank you, my dear. I've seen him dance, too. Oh, yeah? Drag pants? You are about as graceful as a three-toed sloth creeping across a bed of hot horseshoes. <laughs> or in a faster tempo, you look like you've just got into a pair of trousers which has been put out to dry on an anthill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, for your information, kidney napper... Now, boys, I'll... boys, boys. Please, now. Not here and not tonight. I'm having too much fun to listen to you two victims. Well, he makes me... You're right, my dear. This is a nice party, isn't it? And you two are the guests of the most popular man in town. You are with La Trivia, aren't you? Yeah, he's with us. <laughs> you know, he's introduced us to simply everybody, Doctor. Even the Chinese consul. Oh, is he here? Yeah, and I wish I'd had more time to talk to him. On account of all the Chinese friends I used to have in San Francisco. Mickey, you never told me about having a lot of Chinese friends. I never told you about how I used to spend so much time playing Ma Jong and singing songs with Ah Fong and Sam Hong of the Long Bong Tong. You never did. Well, Lotus Flower, I will. Chop, chop. <laughs> Excuse me while I run over to the refreshment table. It's the only punch I expect to get out of this. <laughs> please, Doctor, please, don't go. This is extremely interesting. Well, sir, the Long Bong Tong... Uh, what's the song? A tong, my dear, is a Chinese lie. Sort of a mutual benefit association. Oh? And the long bong was a fine tongue. You know, if you had a deeper voice, you'd sound like a toy fire engine. <laughs> well, sir, Ah Fong and Siam Hong were heads of the tongue, and we used to spend long, long hours playing Ma Jong in the tongue and singing the tong song, You Can't Go Wong with the Long Bong Tong. <laughs> And when I and Ah Fong and Sam Hong and a thong of long bongs got through with the song and said so long, it was hard on the tong's lungs because you can't go wong with the long bong tongue. It's a long song. <laughs> It's too bad me and Ah Fong split up like that. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't just split you up, foreign devil. Why, McGee, what happened with you and Ah Fong? Oh, I guess I was just a little untactful. It seems that Ah Fong and the whole Long Bong Tong went to the circus one day, and a tiger got loose and got into their box and ate every one of them up, except Ah Fong, who had just stepped out for a sack of leafy nuts. <laughs> How are you untactful? Well, not knowing about the tiger eating his friends, the next time I seen Ah Fong, I says, Hi, boy, how are all the fellas? And... He just stared at me. Finally, I says to him, I says, what's the matter? I says, the cat got your tongue? <laughs> and he busted into tears and liked to beat the bejunior out of me right there. And that's why I'm always so... Sa what's the matter? Who was the dark-haired guy standing here just now? The one that kind of sneered and walked away. That, dearie, was the Chinese consul. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Why didn't somebody tell me? Days. What goes on? Looks like the governor's going to make a speech. Pompous old goat, ain't he? Quiet taxpayer. I'd rather hear him than you. Uh, members of the Wistful Vista Country Club, guests, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> uh, have a little surprise for you. Uh, four local lads to sing for us. They have left their work in filling stations, groceries, bookmakers, and laundries at great... <laughs> Uh, d d personal sacrifice to... Uh, 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 they are going to sing an old favorite for us. Uh, uh, well, uh, here they are. The answer to that old question, what has four heads, eight legs, and sing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> the King's Men. Oh, here by the fire. 
we defy the storm. So how we are warm and we have our heart's desire. For here we're good fellows, and the beach would hand our fellows, and the cup is at the lip. In the pledge of fellowship, of fellowship. While the logs on the fire fill the pipes, pass the bowl. While the logs on the fire with a skull, with a skull. While the logs on the fire fill the pipes, the bowl. party, Mr. Mayor. I just hated to hear them play the last dance. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mrs. McGee. So did I. Did you have fun, McGee? McGee? Uh, what? Oh. oh. <laughs> I must doze off. I'm okay, Molly. You relax, kiddo. I'm okay. That's my hand you're patting, McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this side of you, dearie. We're almost to the mayor's house now. My gosh, it's dark. Don't they have street lights out this way, Latrive? Blacker than the inside of it. Your hat's down over your eyes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I can see now. I was just telling His Honor what a wonderful time we had, McGee. Did you see all the beautiful clothes on those women? The place was simply crawling with mink coats. Ah, pata, mink coats. Who'd ever want a coat that everybody else has got one that's just like it? I would. <laughs> I know what you mean. But it takes a certain type woman to wear a mink coat, though, you know. It does? What type? The type woman that's got a rich husband. <laughs> hey, by the way, Latrive, how about that scuttlebutt tonight about you being our next governor? Oh, well, I... Well, some of my friends would like to see me try it, but it's, uh, it's entirely too early to... Well, uh, congratulations, Mr. Mayor. When will you start the job? Oh, no, it's, it's just talk, Mrs. McGee. Let's not be hasty. I, I, well, I suppose I've always been afflicted with gubernatorial ambition. Well, so what? That's no worse than sinus trouble, boy. <laughs> you just get the right treatment for it and go ahead and make your campaign. Yes, you act like you always have, Mr. Mayor, and you'll win. You betcha. Quiet and dignified. Uh, well, uh, here we are. I believe your car is parked just ahead of us there, McGee. Here we are, Mayor. Right okay? Fine, Mike. Yeah, fine, Mike. Okay. Keep your voice down, dearie. It's half past two. Oh, yes. Yes, the whole neighborhood's asleep. I'm going to sleep late myself tomorrow, Mike, and I think I'll walk to the office, take the morning off, and bring the car to the city hall about noon. Right, Mayor. Thanks. Good night. Good night. If, uh, if it wasn't so late, McGee, I'd ask you folks in. Oh, no, we, we got to get going with this. Huh? This is really a swanky neighborhood you got here, though. Who lives next door there? There? Yeah. That's the editor of the Gazette. Oh. And over there is McDonald, the president of the Third National Bank's house. And over on the other side... The is Gazette, another... you say, huh? That's the paper that rode you so hard during election, wasn't it? Hates your administration? Yeah. McGee, come on. Let's go home and let the mayor go to bed. Well, it has been a long day. The dance was great, but I'm worn out. And I'm going to bed and sleep around the clock. You are? <laughs> If you roll over in the night and it falls on the floor, won't it wake you? <laughs> if what falls on the floor? The clock, Mr. Mayor. The one you're going to bed and sleep around. <laughs> yeah, that's the way you sleep, Latrive. I hope you've got a good smooth round clock to curl yourself around. I don't curl myself around a clock, McGee. You I know, really I do... had a sister that slept around a pillow. <laughs> And my little brother slept around a teddy bear for years, but I couldn't sleep around the clock look, if look, I... Look, look, please, please. When I said I was going to sleep around the clock, I merely meant I intend to get myself 12 hours of good sleep tonight. Well, if you hope to get any sleep at all, Mr. Mayor, take my advice and don't go to bed with an alarm clock in your 
Oh, we, we, we got a marble Venus with a clock in her stomach, and you never saw such an uncomfortable... Little... I am not a venal marble. Huh? A marble clocker. <laughs> Great Scott! That was you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but look, you two don't understand. No, I don't, but just... I've had time on my hands lots of times, but I never had time on my stomach. <laughs> If you got to sleep wrapped around a clock, take an electric clock and pull out the plug first. That way. I don't have to sleep wrapped around a rock. Huh? I'll turn up with a clock. You said... clock. Mr. Mayor, the neighbor. I didn't say I was going to rock around in my sleep. No, you... Sleep around in my socks. Clock. I merely said I was a creep. No. I was going to sleep. You sleep. Were... You were the one that said I thought to wrap around a clock. I'll turn around a clock. I'll turn around a pearl. No. No. The police. Oh, buddy. Heavenly it... days, the neighbor. Oh, no. Great Scott. I want the neighbors. Oh, Shut up and go home, will you? Shut up yourself, you big Logan. <laughs> I thought you said this was a refined neighborhood, Mr. Mayor. Listen to those rude people oh, yelling please, at us. Please, please, what are you doing to me? Oh, no, I can't. This is the mayor you're yelling at, and he is home. Go back to bed, stupid. Why are you at half past two? What do you mean yelling like that? Oh, how do I get into these things? This is Mayor <laughs> Latribune. He's got a right to yell at half past two if he wants no, to. No, I don't want to He runs this town, loudmouth. So you go to pipe down, or how'd you like to have your newspaper later? <laughs> Don't you worry, Mr. Mayor. We'll take care yeah, of you. You're not friends. Yeah. That's my shotgun, Grace. No. Call the chief of police. I'm uh, going to the governor on the phone. Oh, oh, oh no. Did you play? I'll have to resign. They'll run me out of town. Sometimes when you fix up a room so that it's prettier and more attractive, you make it harder to take care of. But when you give your room a new beauty with Johnson's Paste Wax, cleaning it is much easier. That's because the same coat of Johnson's Wax that makes the floor so brilliant, so glossy to look at, is a very hard coat. Dirt and grime can't penetrate that tough surface. So a coat of Johnson's Paste Wax is easy to clean. Dirt comes off with a light stroke of a dust cloth. Remember, it isn't enough just to ask for floor wax... Ask for Johnson's Paste Wax. No other wax makes your floors beautiful and easy to clean in exactly the same way. Now, here's a way to polish your wax floor in a few seconds. Get Johnson's new Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. The big whirling brush buffs your floors brilliantly. All you do is guide the polisher across the floor. You can buy a Beauty Floor Electric Polisher from your Johnson dealer or rent one at low cost if you prefer. gentlemen, you're going to hear it pretty often in the next two or three days, but nobody is going to be, mean it more sincerely than we do when we say Happy New Year. We hope you'll not only have a happy, but a safe New Year, because the figures on traffic accidents all over the country are pretty appalling, and they are usually the result of speed and carelessness, so please drive carefully. Remember, you can spend a lot of bitter years explaining to yourself why you are trying to save two minutes. Good night. Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.